Okay, very good morning to all of you. I am Sundar, as he said, from Chemical Engineering Department. So, uh, this is an interface where you conduct courses and uh, you interact with students. So, uh, we are going to tell you about uh, how to use this, how to install the, the software is a publicly available software. So, how to install it and configure it, which most of you I presume are from Computer Science Department. So, you will be uh, taught in, in a later part of this workshop. So, Assuming that you have got the system already installed, I am just going to tell you how you are going to teach a course using this uh, interface. Okay. So, now the lecture that I have uh, I am going to give you is itself I mean I have uploaded as a uh, content in this interface. So, as I walk through the lecture, you will also see how the interface looks. So, this is the interface Moodle inf interface which in which the course will be there. So, just as the course has got its own contents, I am just going to put my own contents of the stock in this uh, uh, course. So, what is Moodle? Well, it is commonly called as one of the uh, content management system, course management system or a learning management system, different terminologies are used. Now, it actually stands for uh, modular object oriented dynamic learning environment. So, that is what it stands for. It is a uh, it is under the uh, GNU uh, public license, it is a free software that is why it is one of the most uh, uh, widely used uh, um, public domain softwares. Now, there are about uh, 50,000 sites which are running Moodle officially, I mean they are declared that they are uh, using Moodle, but there are many more which have uh, like in a private environment, like within our own institute we have several uh, Moodle sites which are not open to public. So, there are uh, several such sites. The number of courses are about 27 lakhs currently and about there are 3 crore uh, students who have registered for this worldwide. Okay. Our own, so then this is second most popular, there is one more called as a blackboard or a web CT you might have heard. So, those is that is a license and it is a very expensive uh, piece of software. And uh, after that, the market share belongs to Moodle. So, it is one of the uh, widely used uh, uh, systems. Our own IIT has uh, got this Moodle website which you see here moodle.itb.ac.in which is a publicly accessible uh, uh, site although you need to have a user account. So, there are some courses which are offered on just like the CEP course you have other courses which have been offered in Moodle and which is uh, which can be accessed uh, from anywhere in the world. So, it is uh, it is and our plan is to probably increase this to uh, most of other courses that IIT is offering. Now, what is, uh, why do you use uh, uh, web management? Basically, it is uh, this whole environment lets you to completely manage the courses right from enrollment, okay, payment of fees and th that kind of uh, administrative tasks up to conducting the course, teaching the course, conducting quizzes, evaluating, grading and so on. It is a complete uh, set up, only thing which is not there is possibly giving a degree, okay. everything else is there. So, and uh, it is being object, it is a object uh, modular environment, it is uh, very highly scalable. Okay. So, as you can see this uh, number of users, that is a complete big average, there are many sites which uses uh, uh, nearly about uh, a lakh users, just one site which can serve to so many users. There is some uh, university in UK which does that, it is called open university and they use this. Okay. So, that is the advantage. So, now let me <coughs> just go through the uh, interface and tell you. So, just uh, discuss the broad layout of this thing. So, you are just familiar with what are the things there, then we will go into the uh, details. So, this is the broad layout, you have uh, the uh, standard uh, three column format. So, you have some information which is related to the, so this is uh, I have logged in as a teacher for this course. Okay. So, I see something which is related to administration. If I log in as a student, I won't see all these things. And this is the main course, the way it goes. The course can be organized according to topics like this or according to the dates. I mean, this is the first week, this is the second week and third week. So, whatever you are delivering in the first week, the contents will go here and second week and so on. 
that way. So, this is the main content of the course is the second uh, the uh, center column and the right column you have related events, uh, latest news, what is uh, recent activities, has some courses been uploaded, has some new material that is come up or is there any quiz that is coming up that kind of things. So, this is the basic uh, page layout. I have organized this uh, talk in three levels that is you can use Moodle at a very basic level. So, it is it is very similar to the way uh, your uh, web has evolved ok. So, initially web just meant that you have you just post some information somebody reads it there is no interaction ok. So, you can design this uh, whole thing in a similar way. So, at you could have a beginners level where there is just a one way communication you just provide some information as a teacher students read it ok. There is nothing more than that just a, in, instead of mailing the students the assignment copies or mailing them uh, uh, lecture notes you just put it up and they download it it is just a one way communication. You can have a little more a little more uh, interaction between the students and what I call it as an intermediate uh, two way communication where you have chat chat rooms like where uh, like the regular chat rooms of uh, Google or other places or you have discussion forums you somebody asks question and you answer it ok. And you can uh, ask students to submit assignments ok like scanned reports or uh, they type in something and submit. So, either of this is possible ok. So, it is a little more interaction in that sense or you can conduct surveys find out uh, how the course is going if there is any particular difficulty you ask post questions and get a poll instant survey. So, that I call it as an intermediate level and an advanced level is uh, more where you actually grade online ok based on something like what is called as a question answer forum. So, question answer forum is a, a forum where you can post a question and the students get to see the so, students are going to answer it ok. Now, when you pose the question if a student A answers it the answer is not seen to other students other students cannot see the answer unless a student B poses student B can see the answer what A has posted only if only after B has posted the his own answer or her own answer ok. So, this kind of a little bit complex interaction is there which allows you to grade the students also when the answer is out all the students who have posted the answer before only they, they can see not the others. So, it allows you to grade little more uh, uh, fairly and the most important thing that I personally use is what is called as a quiz which is basically an online uh, examination ok. You can conduct a quiz which is properly timed and you can allow multi different ways of questioning the uh, testing the uh, knowledge ok. I will go through that details later, but I am just telling you that these are online quizzes just like many of this uh, online quizzes that you have on online examinations that you have you are able to grade it instantly ok. You you know you you are already coded the answer uh, in the uh, program and as soon as they answer it they are instantly graded ok and the marks are uh, according last sign and there are more complicated things like wikis ok. You can allow you can uh, uh, let the students uh, organically develop a new content by collaboration among themselves and you can evaluate them ok. So, this kind of little more complex interaction between the students and the teacher. And finally, there is what is called as a grade book that is all the activities that you have conducted as quizzes. Uh, question answer forums, workshops, wikis all where you have actually given them grades ok either automatically or by actually going through that just as you are going to correct papers you can actually read those uh, submissions there and grade it. So, all those grades can be finally, uh, you do a uh, grade analysis you sub give them different weights for each of the categories. So, quizzes is 10 percent, this is 20 percent and so on and that grade analysis then assigning grade letters all these things is uh, quite automatic ok. So, all this is uh, possible at three different levels of interaction with, with the students. Now, so at the beginners level a few uh, little more details now. Now, you play a role the, the this most of the 
softwares if you have seen you, you allows you to play as a if you log in as a user it allows you to play different roles ok. I might be a teacher of one student uh, one course, but I could be a student of another course or I could be a teaching assistant of another course ok. So, as I log in I assume a role for that course ok and that role is initially assigned by the teacher of the course. So, once as an administrator what you do is first create courses and assign teachers. So, once the teachers are into a course then the teachers can assign different people or different users what their roles are say 5 of them are teaching assistants 100 of them are students ok. So, uh, that is called as a taking a role and uh, let me just run through how to add uh, contents to the course ok. So, now I am going to tell you how to uh, add some important content it is very difficult I mean it uh, as I said that it is only when you start using it you will uh, learn it better, but just that something will get in now. Now, so this is the uh, interface uh, this is the role that I said ok. As a teacher I can switch my role to any uh, sub roles ok. A teacher is a super role and under that you could have a teaching assistant a non editing teacher or a student ok. Teacher has got more permissions than non editing teacher who has got more permissions than a student ok. A non editing teacher is typically a teaching assistant ok who is able to grade marks or uh, grade these things, but he cannot add new content ok. He cannot he is non editing in that sense he is a teacher in the sense he is a grading but he is uh, a teacher who is not able to add contents. So, when I want to add anything to this uh, then we just go to this uh, turn editing on option and that gives me little more editing uh, flexibilities all these are all editing icons and uh, I can do different activities here ok. So, to begin with let us start with one by one from the left this is the participants of the course ok. I want to add participants or I want to delete participants that is students to the course ok. So, presently uh, these many participants are there in this course ok. I can get information about them what are the courses he or she his email address. Suppose I, I I want an unenroll this person is basically I am going to take him off the course. So, that can be done here. Now, down here there is the course administration this one is not seen by students. So, this administration suppose I switch role to a student I can see what a student sees. So, student simply sees the participants activities uh, minimal things ok news and this he cannot see anything more in the administration he can see his own grades or he can unroll he can uh, unenroll herself or himself from the course. So, I go to my normal role here. So, as a teacher I am able to change the settings of the course. So, the course settings includes the details of the course. So, this is the name of the course ok a brief description which will appear in the um, like this. So, this is a description. So, this is a list of courses that are conducted in this site. So, this gives the description of the course and then I can say what uh, how do I want to arrange my topics the main the central content how do I want to arrange it. I can arrange it in weekly format week 1, week 2, week 3 and week 4 or I can arrange in topics format that is I, I do not have any particular week based, but chapter wise suppose you are delivering a, a whole course each chapter would be one topic something like in that sort. Then I say course start date hmm, some all these options which you can uh, read yourself so it is not very difficult. Uh, yeah this is by and large the important thing till when from when you can start the enrollment when you can end the enrollment and some this is just basically the rough things of the course ok. These are usually created when you do it as an administrator of the uh, Moodle site 
So, when you create it these things will be taken by default, but then after you assign teachers, teachers will be able to change small things in this. Okay. So, that is about the settings. Now, now you are a teacher of this course, it is been assigned to you by the administrator of the site and then you, what you do is, so you will have this one as blank, there is nothing actually. So, you have to first assign roles, okay. usually you can in IIT Bombay as soon as a student registers with our academic office, they are automatically enrolled here. Okay. So, in your cases you might have to set up those things or some way of linking this with the LDAP and things like that. So, there are different roles now, okay. now I want to assign roles. So, presently this course has got one teacher and 33 students. Okay. Now, suppose I want to add more teachers to the course. Okay. So, this is um, a list of uh, students which are here on users which are in this site and I can add them as teachers. Okay. So, I just search for him and I am just adding his him to be a teacher of this course. Okay, he is a teacher now. So, I have two teachers now. Okay. So, that similarly you can do with the students. Okay. So, from a list of students you add students or delete students. So, that is about assigning roles to the course. So, that forms the group of people who will be actually seeing the course. Now, let us say I want to add contents to the course. Okay. So, which is the main course that I am going to teach. So, I go to this editing mode. So, I get all these editing icons here to add contents. So, basically there are in the main section, this main section there are two types of contents. One is a resource okay, and one is an activity. So, you can add a resource or an add, add an activity. So, each of these boxes here is one topic or a one week. Okay. This is first week, the second week and so on or it could be topic 1, topic 2, topic 3 and so on. Okay. So, each of these boxes you can add a resource or you can add an activity. Okay. A resource is either a simple uh, web page. Okay. So, you can use this to create your own web pages also. I mean, so, it is a much more general environment, but where a simple thing you can actually create a simple web page, okay, which is a plain Visivig uh, editor. Or you can, so this is just a Visivig editor where you put in uh, the contents of a web page. For example, this whole, this is a simple web page which is a resource. The, the lecture that I am giving you now, effective learning through Moodle, the lecture I am giving you now is, is a simple web page. So, I, I just went and added a web page. this is a web page, I added a web page through that. Now, you can also add a link to a file. Okay. So, if you have typically if uh, teachers have their uh, notes in a doc file of PDF file okay, and they do not want to again type it here. So, in that case you just upload a file and just provide a link. Like for, for example, I have put a PDF link here. So, this says for example, the course syllabus the texts and so on or the course notes, notes itself. Okay. So, that forms the uh, a resource which is of a file type, it is a link to a file. So, these are all resources. Now, about activities, there are several activities. Okay. It takes quite while to actually familiarize with, but I will just tell you the important things that are commonly used. So, activities I said could be quizzes, forum, okay, discussion forum or it could be workshops, wikis and so on as you can see here. So, chat, it could be a question a questionnaire which is like a survey, you also have separate survey modules and wiki and quiz. Okay, so, these are all as activities which lets you more complex level of interaction. One of the default activity which comes in all courses is called as a news forum. Okay. So, uh, there are these are all discussion forums where you interact with the students. News forum is a special uh, discussion forum in which by default 
only the teacher is allowed to post a content okay only the teacher is allowed to post content the student cannot post content there by default you can of course change it now when you post content it means that it is a it's just a discussion forum like a, it goes to a mailing list so it is basically all the students who are registered for the course automatically get that information so i am going to uh, this is a so i am going to this news forum and i say add a new topic so this topic i've already added here course starts today okay so if i say this the demo course begins at such and such time so when i say this and i say post it and immediately everybody will be mailed to all it will be mailed to all the participants of the course teachers non editing teachers as well as students now this is a news forum where only the teacher can post but the students can reply to the post okay they cannot initiate a post they cannot initiate a thread but they can reply to a existing thread okay so they can reply so they have some questions they post it back and everybody else can see it so that is a news forum but we can also create a more complex thing in which the students are also allowed to initiate a new post okay and then you carry on discussions so somebody asks a question everybody else is able to, it's just like asking a question in a class everybody else is able to see and the teacher replies the answer everybody else is able to see okay so that is okay some name for this for you can call it a general okay a standard forum from general use okay and then you just give some so you create a you can create a new discussion topic yourself or the students are now able to post it here so they just click on this and add a new topic and they can discuss so that is a very simple level of uh, interaction with the students now coming to the other activities what is there is difference between an assignment and a quiz okay an assignment is different types okay you can post a question and ask students to upload a file or you post a question and ask students to type the answer which again you have to actually manually go and correct as though you are correcting papers this is nothing there is no automatic correction involved in assignment there is no automatic correction no you have to read it and grade it okay just as you do in normal uh, paperwork or it could be an offline activity okay for example you are conducting a mid semester examination some like i have added here okay you are conducting a offline activity you are conducting a classroom examination but you want to in incorporate the marks obtained there into your common interface which is here okay so you are conducting a course which is partly online partly offline but you want to do the grading online so what you do is you create a dummy activity called as an offline activity okay and then so this mid sem marks which i have written here is an offline activity and i go and say i look at the submitted assignments nobody has submitted right because this is an offline this is an exam which was conducted in classroom but i have corrected the papers and i have got the marks and i just come here and give the marks here like that okay i just each of them i look at their marks offline and add it here okay so this becomes a uh, grading and offline activity and incorporating those results in a common interface online interface okay so as soon as you upload this students will be immediately able to see the answers you don't have to type the whole thing again and post it on your uh, notice board or so on okay you don't have to post the marks like that so uh, everything is incorporated in this interface students can see only their own marks of course they cannot see the uh, answer script but they can see the marks and that is integrated in your final course grade so that's called as an online offline activity so that's different levels of uh, assignments now the other 
very important thing is called a quiz. Okay. Quiz is also an uh, quiz is basically an online examination. Okay. It is an online examination which allows you to test different ways. Okay. There are different questions that are uh, possible. Um, you can time the quiz. Okay. You can allow re attempts of the quiz and several things. It is one of the most useful things that I found in my own course. Uh, the way I do is weekly assignments are given as a quiz. Okay. So, I have a set of problems, I ask the students to solve it every week, okay. but I, I, do, I do not have any time limits, you can do n number of attempts. Okay. So, you solve it and you get a wrong answer, you go back, correct your uh, solution, come back and try it and you keep doing this till you get the correct answer. Okay. So, this allows a learning process particularly uh, they learn on themselves right how to get the correct answer they know the final answer when it's when they've got it right okay now this is particularly important when you want scalability okay if your a teacher is teaching a class of 100 and if he has to correct uh, um, 100 assignments every week it's going to be a huge amount of time okay now this allows the student to correct it himself okay he if he knows it's a mistake he submits it, he gets the right answer. Okay. So, you can give a penalty for submitting twice or thrice, but you can do not have to give penalty also that is up to uh, the teacher's subjective uh, decisions. But the main point is that it allows you to uh, automate most of the processes, most of the uh, routine processes of assignments. Now, I would like to spend about 10-15 uh, minutes on this uh, activity of creating a quiz. Okay. What are the different kinds of questions that you can set up and uh, I just run you through that. Okay. So, quizzes is the online exam that I said can be of uh, different types. You can try as I said you can allow multiple attempts. So, let us just probably just go through this. I have already created this quiz. So, when you create a quiz, these are the questions that will ask. So, when does the quiz open? So, quiz can, so this is an online examination, you can have, have it indefinitely or have a particular time frame in which you are, the students are allowed to take this quiz. So, let us say I open the quiz at this time and I close the quiz at say 5 o'clock. Okay. And do you want to have a time limit for the quiz? That is also possible. Okay. So, you have the quiz begins at any time between this 3 hours, but you can take it only for a half an hour time, okay, things like that. And uh, some things like how do you want the questions to uh, display. Okay. The nice thing about this is that you have, if you have a good question bank, hundreds of questions, you can select a few questions from there and give different students different question paper, okay, which, is, which is again good if you have similar I mean similar level of difficulty, but different question different students see uh, different questions. This one is a very nice thing as I said, students can attempt the quiz multiple number of times. Okay. You can allow them to uh, uh, submit it once and then submit it after some time also, if they made any mistake. Okay. And you can have a great penalty for second attempt or third attempt and so on. Okay. There is something called as building on the last attempt. So, this allows more uh, uh, better learning. Okay. Building on the last attempt means suppose I have done 10 questions, uh, 5 out of 10 questions right, okay. only I have got 5 wrong. So, in the second attempt I can just do the last 5 right or otherwise I can the second attempt I can the teacher can decide I will present a totally new set of problems to him. So, this is making a little more tough, but you would ideally want the student to l build on the previous attempts. So, that is about building on the attempt and there is a section about what the students see immediately after an attempt. So, immediately after an attempt are they able to see their own responses, can they see the scores, whether they got it right or wrong, can they see the correct answers. You typically do not want to see, you do not want the students to see the right answers till the quiz closes. Okay. 
and then for each question you have a feedback ok. So, you, you can type so with a question you also type uh, answer and a feedback to that you give a hint or you say it is good bad whatever some kind of uh, feedback we will go through that. So, these are things which control that aspect. Now, so once I have done this now I have to so this is about the quiz this is quiz administration right. Now, I have to actually add quiz questions to this. So, I go to the edit tab here. So, the quiz has got update the quiz and several things about the quiz details of the quiz. So, general info is when the quiz quiz opens when does it close and the results after the students have taken the results will be summarized here. So, general information like how many students have attempted 79 students are the students that are registered for the course they have attempted 536 times this is typically about uh, 4 5 times not 5 times how much is it 7 8 times each student has attempted 8 times. So, results I can take a look at the results. So, this person has attempted it once and has got 18 marks ok. This person has attempted it several times each time he is probably improving or I do not know what he is doing anyway. So, uh, this is the information regarding the results. So, you yourself can preview how the quiz will look ok. So, once you set up the quiz this is how the quiz will look to a student. So, there is a question there is a figure and there is a place where I can write here she can write the answer and so on ok. So, this is how the quiz looks. So, this I did in the first time. So, uh, it took uh, it is like solving here and typing it there that is nothing much that is that, not much. So, once you have solved it on paper it is just right typing it here. Ok. So, let me just run through a sample quiz. Let us say you have already got a good question bank ok. I will uh, how to. So, this is the questions in the quiz this is the question bank. So, I select questions from the question bank and put drop it in the quiz ok. So, there are a lot of question banks here different courses and uh, uh, different categories. So, let me say that I want So, in under the topic statics I have so many questions ok. So, I can choose these questions to appear in the quiz ok. So, I am adding question to the quiz. So, these are the questions which will appear to the students ok. So, once I have done this I can preview how the quiz will look to the students ok. So, this particular quiz has been set for 30 minutes as soon as you start by 30 minutes it will automatically uh, close everything whatever has been uh, answers has been written those answers will be taken. So, this is how the student sees the uh, question question paper. So, there is a box. So, this is one kind of question where you have to at least in uh, chemical engineering we have problems like it is a typical physics problem we give a numerical pro question ok where you have to solve putting the variable substituting for the variables and get the final numerical value ok. So, I code the solution in terms of a formula in the question paper in the question ok. But the students each of them sees a different data set somebody will say 10 meters somebody will say 1 meter 5 meters and so on ok. So, the numerical final numerical answer is different ok. So, it just prevents one level of copying but the formula is the same ok. People see a different data set. So, one person will see 6.5 kilometers other person will see something else and so on. So, this is how you uh, so, once it is 30 minutes. So, at the end of that they are going to save it, but without submitting saving means just whatever is written here is just a form saving saving the form and submitting means submitting the whole uh, quiz and submit all and finish is the final thing that they all have to click. So, that is actually submitting the paper and going away. So, this will also happen if uh, 30 minutes is already uh, if the window is open 30 minutes over it will automatically submit and it will go. So, this is the overall view I am I will go through the details now. So, 
Now, this there was an existing question bank and from the question bank I have just taken some questions inside. Now, how do you create this question bank to begin with? So, ha, no, no, see I want the uh, which question will come first, which question will come second like say like that. So, that has gone up there, iron furnace has gone up now. For crude oil well I want that to be the first question or the second question. So, that is the second question. So, when I preview it the crude oil well will be the second question, the order in which you want the questions to appear. If you want it to be in a particular order you can make it random, but if you want it to appear in a particular order like if there is a question and the following that there are three questions. So, then you do not want it to be random. No? So, you want it to come in a particular order. you can set it as a random which is controlled in the main interface. Main quiz interface you say how the questions should appear, should they appear in random or the default uh, ordered fashion. Okay. So, now let me just run you through how to create a question bank. A question bank is there are different types of questions, okay. calculated question, description, essay, matching, embedded answer, multiple choice, short answer, numerical and so on. Okay. Now, I will just run you the simple question, this one is a true or false. Okay. You give a statement, they click on the radio buttons true or false or it could be multiple choice. Okay. So, it is just a check box kind of type. Then it could be matching. So, you have two columns A and B, you give few statements here, you give few statements here you have to match them hmm? A to B, B to C and so on. So, these are all mostly I mean so Moodle is a very general environment. So, sup suppose you are from the universities and you are setting up for that, you will see that these kind of questions are more used by humanities kind of uh, subjects where you test the test the understanding the way they do it not analytical skills. Okay. So, even for my own course I use these kind of questions like uh, matching true or false to understand the students uh, understanding of this to gauge the students understanding of the subject. It okay, is more of a uh, uh, non analytical testing. Analytical testing is done by two methods one is the numerical and calculated. Numerical means the answer is a number fixed number constant always everybody sees the same question and the answer is some 3.42 or something like that and everybody answer is 3.42 that is numerical. Calculated is I give a general formula for the answer, each student sees a different question and therefore, the answer is different. Okay. So, that is a I have to give a formula for calculated question and I have to give a uh, constant for a numerical question. So, so you see here this is the question type. So, 2 plus 2 equal to what? Okay. So, this is means it is a calculated question, this is a numerical question and this is a multiple choice. Okay. So, I will just run you through one or two this. So, the way I can create a question here right. So, I do this I create a new calculated question. Okay. If I go do that this is what I will get what I am going to do is to actually edit an already existing question which is same as creating a new question. So, here whatever this is the question that is this is my question, it is all given in some formulas and the answer is finally, here. Okay. Now, coming to back to this, how is the how does the question look? So, the question is now uh, is anybody not familiar with LaTeX? or anybody knows what LaTeX is. Okay. So, LaTeX is a programming uh, environment basically it is a um, um, word processing uh, environment which allows you to write mathematical uh, equations complex mathematical and of course, typical normal formatting. So, it is just like an HTML uh, much more uh, uh, earlier version of uh, structured programming. Okay. So, there are I want to use some Greek symbols and mathematical symbols typically which occurs in our engineering courses. 
So, I use so this double dollar sign anything that comes under double dollar sign will appear as a symbol. So, I can show it to you there air density rho a is equal to something ok. So, that is what is air density rho a this is in the latex is equal to I have put it in curly brackets here ok. So, anything that I put in curly bracket is a variable which can take random values as assigned by the program. Now, this row A when it is displayed to the student it takes from my existing database of values and puts a value there. So, a student sees 1.39 here, another student says 2.5 or something like that. And I go through that there is another variable here row G ok, row G is equal to curly bracket row G, curly bracket row G is 0.58 random variable and a height of H meters is 35.4 here ok. I am just saying h meters here and that is replaced. Now, <coughs> I have set up a problem in terms of variables and I have to give a solution in terms of those variables. So, this is this rho a minus rho g into h is my solution <coughs> ok, it is very simple. Then once you do this, you say this answer this is the answer, correct answer formula. What is the, the random values are assigned by the, assigned by the program, correspondingly the, this, uh, this is written in PHP ok. So, you can this uh, syntax here is a PHP syntax, whatever math PHP syntax you use the same syntax will hold here. So, now those random values are assigned here and the program also calculates what the random answer would be. Okay. And what is the grade for this answer? 100 percent. Okay. So, there could be some instances where you want to say that a uh, question has got multiple answers depending on the way you have uh, thought about it. Okay. If you get this answer right, I have give 50 percent marks. If you get this answer right, I get give you 50 percent marks. So, that is why you are given option of the grade for this correct answer. And since this is all numerical, you need to give some tolerance. Okay people while calculating they will uh, leave out some decimals ok. So, you need to give some tolerance to what accuracy the answer can be right ok. So, I would say that tolerance of uh, relative tolerance of 0.2 which is about 2 percent. So, if the answer is between I will show you that within 2 percent of the correct answer then I accept it ok, but it should not be 10 percent away which is a bad uh, work anyway. And the correct answer I want to show 3 significant digits that is a typical thing we follow in engineering that you need typical students have uh, the practice of writing 10 digits after uh, one this one that does not carry any meaning in actual thing. So, you have to typically use only 2 to 3 digits that is all it uh, uh, carries. So, after saying that I go to the next page and these are the 3 variables that I have used. So, again this is now. So, this is where I add the actual numbers to this ok. I need to have add some meaningful number. I do not want my density of water to take some arbitrarily uh, random values right. I need to give some reasonable values of density of water and therefore, the density of air and the height over which I am asking. I cannot ask it what is the pressure difference in 2 millimeter of gas. I do not want that, I want in kilometers ok. So, I this is where the teacher is able to decide on what range of parameter, what range of values the parameters can take. Like for example, the height, height I have said in kilometers. So, I am saying that kilometers between 20 and 50, randomly distributed between 20 and 50, uniform distribution between 20 and 50. I can have a uniform or a log uniform distribution. Okay. Then density of gas, density of gas is typically less than 1 in kg per meter. So, I am saying between 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. Then density of water, okay. this is in 10 power 3 kg per, oh, this is also gas, both are gas here, one is gas and one is air. So, that is also less than 1. Okay. Now, what I do, 
this is the range of values I have set. Then I want to add a particular, I want to generate some 20 data, uh, 20 sets of data. So I just say add 20 force regeneration and say add 20. Okay, so all already I had 10 items, now there are 10. So these are all different sets of problems each student will see. Student will see height of 28.2, density of uh, gas is 0.61, density of air is 1.03 and so on. Okay, so this is what the student, each, each student could see randomly. So the students will get when they are presented, they are presented with these choices and this is the answer based on this formula rho a minus rho g into h. So, if you do this you get 19.1 mm. Now, 19.1 is I said I need only 3 digits of uh, significant digits. So, there is only 3 digits here and the range allowed is 2 percent. So, any answer between 18.7 and 19.4 is acceptable to me. So, depending on the complexity if there are more calculations involved typically the error also will multiply and then you set to 2 percent, 3 percent, 4 percent and so on, but typically 2 to 3 percent is more than sufficient. So, that is it. So, then you save the changes. Okay. So, this you created a question and you saved, you created a database for it and you saved it and now a question bank is ready and there is those question banks, from that question bank you can add and drop it to this. So, I say that I want to add this particular problem here and that is there here. Okay. And what is it? So, uh, within each question I can say what it, what is the difficulty level of a question. Okay. So, typically what uh, we do is how much time it takes to solve a particular question, so 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes that you give as a default grade for the question and those all will get added. So, that way you can compare two different questions. Okay. So, when you edit a question, you are allowed to say what is the grade for the question, 15 minutes, okay. 15 marks, but 15 minutes is typically a good scale, the time that required to solve a problem, you keep it as a default grade for the question, so that you can compare different questions and set up the total time for the quiz. So, if you set the total time is 6, uh, 1 hour, you typically set questions for about 45 minutes. So, then you say what the maximum grade is. So, presently the maximum comes to 115. So, this all these things will be rescaled to 100 marks now. Okay. So, this is all set up now. You have set up the quiz and you have set it to be open at say uh, 2 hours from now. So, students are uh, then able to see the quiz. They attempt it. So, you give a bigger, bigger window. Okay, so if the even the question uh, the quiz takes only one hour, but you give say one and a half hours. Typically, what happens is you have login problems, students coming late. But they are allowed to take only for one hour. From the time they start, they are allowed to take uh, only for one hour. But the total window you are allowed about say one and a half hours, so whatever you you desire. It's exactly a course web page where you uh, it's very easy to add contents. Now, so, uh, teacher can easily put up the class notes, put up assignments for download and a news group. Because uh, usually typically what happens is uh, um, uh, teachers start at this level, they start at the level of just posting, posting some information as a course web page. Like typically they have it in their own web page, but this allows little more thing, you do not need to know HTML programming, you do not need to know uh, how to link a file all these things are automated. So, it is just a course that is that's what when I said that three different levels, the basic level is simple a simple one way communication where it is a course web page, you put it, put all the information which is a, a, a it's plain HTML page, but edited using a VCBIG editor and a news group. 